Secondly, empathy. The definition of empathy. The action of understanding, being aware of being sensitive to, just give me one minute, to, to and vicariously experiencing the feeling of thoughts and experience of another of either the past or present without having the feelings, thoughts, and experience fully communicated in objectively explicit manner also, the capacity of this. Two, the imaginative projection of a subjective state into an object so that the object appears to be infused with. So empathy is how we feel towards something. We, we, we get that understanding and we're aware of our surroundings. And so we it sympathize or empathize with what we see, do, hear of how we interact with that thing. Almost pretty much like a perspective. Now, heal, verb, definition of heal, to make free from injury or disease, to make sound or whole heal a wound, to make well again, to restore to health, heal the sick, uh, to a, to cause an undesirable condition to be overcome men uh, or men the troubles had been forgotten, but they have been healed, with, according to William Power, to be to patch up or correct a breach or division. So if something is broken, you bring it back together, you heal it. Heal a branch between friends. To restore the original uh, purity or integrity, heal of sin. So we have these things here, perspective, empathy, and heal. I know it's a lot. I've, that's how we roll here. We, we've given you a lot in, in, in one setting so you can understand this. Now, let's go further. I want to show you this. Um, oh, I misspelled it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I want to show you this uh, video. Um, my uncle took me to see this video. It was made back in 1986. I, again, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a film major, so I'm visual, so... I remember this movie. It was a beautiful movie to me. Uh, it was a comedy called Soul Man. It was um, by the production of Belcor Film Investors, New World uh, Pictures. They distributed in theaters. And I wanna show you this scene right here. And as you watch it, just understand what we just explained and see if we can put it in concept. Here you go. Yes. You must have learned a great deal more than you bargained for through this experience, Mr. Watson. Yes, sir. Mr. Watson, a Harvard Law graduate can do a great many things. Make a lot of money. Teach. Become a senator. A judge. A Harvard Law graduate has power, Mr. Watson. I hope that I teach my students to use that power responsibly, even generously. But you've learned something that I can't teach them. You've learned what it feels like to be black. No, sir. Beg your pardon? I don't really know what it feels like, sir. If I didn't like it, I could always get out. It's not the same, sir. You've learned a great deal more than I thought. If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it's, it's, it's worth its value in gold now. Um, this guy wanted to get into Harvard Law his, he was came from a wealthy family in California. He his, his dad cut him off because he was partying, wasn't re, was irresponsible. But what happened? I'm not going to give it away. But what happened is he got in because his friend invented this tanning pill. It was a tanning pill. He took it, made him turn black. And while he was there, his first semester, he began to experience what it was like to be a black person. Now, I, I, hey. It, Back in the day, it was funny, but now if you look at it, it holds true today. So I pose this question to you. What Would you volunteer to be black if you're white or white if you're black, a man if you're a woman or a, a woman if you're a man 
for one week. You don't have to answer. Just think about that for a minute. Yes, I will say. Huh? Yes, I will say I would volunteer to be a man for one week. Wow. Wow. <laughs> okay. I, I I don't know if I, let me tell you something. I don't know if I'll make a good woman because my wife says no. <laughs> my wife's like, heck no. Um, but I'll volunteer to be white. Alice is raising her hand. Go ahead. Go ahead, Allison. Okay. Yeah, so I'm white. Um, I would definitely volunteer to be a man just because it's more powerful and I'd love to experience that. Um, I think I would also volunteer to be black for a week because I want to know what it's like. I mean, you know, I've heard stories. People, you know, my friends have told me I've been in stores with black friends and seen the way I'm treated when I'm with them as opposed to when I'm alone, but I don't know what it's like. So I would definitely, I would do it, yeah. Okay. You know, if, if now we know we have the technology to do that now, we, we do. We, you know, you make up Hollywood, everything, but is it really the same? Is it, is it really? You know, to as as Allison said, you know, a white man to just walk in somewhere. How you must imagine to spend your belief for one minute walking into Starbucks as a white man. Now, who knows, right? So just, just food for thought, just food for thought as we, as we move on. So here's another one I wanna play for you as now we're gonna go into the discussion. And as we talk about healing, really about healing, you know, the first thing I came to mind when I came up with this topic are the monks in Tibet. If you wanna be a monk, let's say you came from America, you flew to Tibet, you know, you say, hey, I, I want to be. I, I want self enlightenment. I want to follow the monk, the monk culture. In your mind, as always, you're going to think that oh, you know, you're going to sit in a, a a room somewhere all day and meditate and chant and pray. But in reality, and you could you could watch documentaries on this. That is not. That's just a small portion of what they do. The monks train. They. They take care of the, the temple. They go out into the, the public and they help people. They interact with politicians. They do a lot of things to build up to that enlightenment area. And so when you talk about healing beyond racism, it's not about the kumbaya and, and, and this, this notion that yeah, you know, I'm gonna talk about it this week or I'll put up an ad on television or I'll, you know, throw money at it or whatever. This is a process because as I say in most of my um, podcasts and, and when I have my online discussions, somebody's gonna get killed tomorrow because of racism and hate or sexism. Somebody's gonna get killed. It's not gonna stop until we demand literally to pull out that nail out of society of all this, this, this strife that we as people are allowed to be put in there. So I want you to watch this video because I told you, I don't, I, I'm not the type of person on here to, to talk about, we're gonna go straight on hardcore and really go into the depth of, of what is it to heal beyond this ugliness. So take a look at this. This happened recently. Turning to a very important story that you need to see. Colorado police under fire for taking a woman and four clearly unarmed children, the youngest just six years old, and holding them in custody, often at gunpoint, forcing them to lie, cuffed face down, as you see here on the ground, scared and humiliated. This was in a salon parking lot for upwards of two hours. There's kids. There's kids. They had guns on, on kids. Oh, my God. Can I 
That is hard to watch, even for a few seconds. Imagine living through it. That went on, as I mentioned, for upwards of two hours. This is America. This happens all the time. Most of the time, I'll be honest with you, it's not even on the national news. Now, tonight, what's new is the woman you saw there, her name is Brittany Gilliam, is now suing Aurora, Colorado. She alleges in court that entire spectacle was an invalid and illegal arrest. She alleges the police were breaking the law. She also notes in her new suit that it hurt and traumatized those innocent children. You heard their cries. She says they now struggle with basic activities like eating and sleeping, and they are in therapy for this. The police department, to be clear, is not even claiming they had an accurate reason for the arrest and conduct you see there by the officers. Instead, they do apologize, and they say they incorrectly thought that that vehicle was stolen. It wasn't. An explanation that many law enforcement experts say does not even justify the force and guns drawn that you saw. Now, here's what, what else is new tonight. You may have heard that elections have consequences. So do social movements sometimes. The protests over the May killing of George Floyd led Colorado to reform police rules in June, passing a new law that bans some aggressive tactics and also a type of automatic legal immunity for officers, which means they can, when warranted, be held personally responsible in court. This is one of the first cases based on that new law. And while everyone's entitled to their day in court, this is the first time citizens in that state have actually been entitled to take on police officers directly and personally for their own day in court. It's very important, and we have some special guests on this story. We are joined now. Turning to a very important story. So I want to stop it right there. And think about that for a minute as we go into our discussion now. Healing just those kids. We, as my professor used to say, Star Fury, when you're in my class, when you're in my philosophy class, you have to look in two ways. Macro and micro, macro and micro. So right now, let's look at this in a microscopic way. 